Let's start our today's class. In our last video, we did lesson number three, force and pressure, in which I told you that force is a cause which either changes the state of rest or state of motion of the body, or changes the size and shape of the body. Now, today I will tell you about the turning effect of force. See, children, suppose there is a stationary rigid body. Like a ball lying on a ground. Now, if I apply force on the ball, it will start moving in the direction in which the force is applied. See, this is the force applied on the ball and it starts moving in the direction of the force. Now, suppose one more body is there, but it is not free to move. It is pivoted at a point O. Pivoted means fixed at a point O and if I apply force on this body so it cannot move forward because it is fixed at this point so it will begin to turn about this point O and the vertical axis which is passing through the point O about which the body rotates is called the axis of rotation this line is called the axis of rotation. Now, in this figure, on pushing, the wheel begins to turn about its pivoted point. It has a turning effect on a body which is not free to move in a straight line but is pivoted at a point about which it can turn. Now, the factors affecting the turning of a body. The turning effect of a force on a body depends on two factors. First factor, the magnitude of the force applied. Larger the magnitude of force applied, more is the turning effect of the body. More force, more turning effect. Second factor is the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivoted point. Larger the perpendicular hmm. distance of point at which the force is applied from the pivoted point, more is the turning effect on the body. In the previous work, I told you that suppose this is a body and it is fixed at the pivoted point and suppose I apply force at this point. So, this distance, this perpendicular distance, the turning effect depends on this perpendicular distance. Both the factors, force as well as the perpendicular distance of the force and the pivoted point O. Now, let us take some examples in a daily life. To open a shutter door, we apply a force, push or pull, normal to the door at its handle P, which is provided at the maximum distance from the hinges. These are the hinges of the door and the handle is provided at the maximum distance from the hinges. We can notice that if we apply the force at a point Q near the hinge arm, much greater force is required to open the door and if the force is applied at the hinge R only, we will not be able to open the door howsoever large the force may be. Thus the handle P is provided near the free end of the door so that a smaller force at a larger perpendicular distance produces the required turning effect of force to open and shut the door. Because the turning effect depends on two factors as I told you, the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot point. So, it is better to increase the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivoted point rather to apply a larger force on the body. More examples you can see from your book. See, these are given on page number 40 and 41. This is a hand flour grinder which was used in the olden days. See here, the upper circular stone of the hand flour grinder is provided with the handle edge near its rim. Rim means boundary, outer surface. Why it is provided near rim? Why not near the center? Because when it is provided near the rim, there is maximum distance from the center so that it can easily be rotated about the iron pivot P at its center by applying a small force at the handle edge. More the perpendicular distance, less force we have to apply to turn it. Similarly, a potter's wheel has a wheel pivoted at the center. See this wheel? 
द पॉटर टर्न्स द व्हील बाय मीन्स ऑफ अ स्टिक एट द रिम ऑफ द व्हील ही होल्ड्स अ स्टिक एंड द व्हील रोटेट्स दिस इज बिकॉज ऑफ द सेम रीजन मोर द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस लेस फोर्स ही हैज टू अप्लाय टू टर्न द व्हील सिमिलरली a carpenter uses a drill machine which is provided with a handle see this handle so that by applying a less force at the end of the handle the drill can be turned easily similarly to turn a steering wheel in a car or a truck the driver applies a force at a point on the rim of the wheel here at the surface at the boundary he applies the force so that more the perpendicular distance from the pivot the center is the pivot point so more the perpendicular distance less force the driver has to apply the turn the steering wheel in a bicycle to turn the wheel the force is applied on the pedal so that the distance of force from the axle of the wheel is increased this is a wheel and you apply force on the pedal which is situated at some distance from the axle so that more the perpendicular distance less force you have to apply to move the pedal and the wheel similarly a spanner which is used to tighten and loosen a nut has a long handle so as to produce a large turning effect by applying a small force at the end of the handle more the perpendicular distance less force we have to apply to turn the spanner so from these examples what do you conclude you conclude that the turning of a body of uh, of the body about the pivot depends not only on the magnitude of the force but also depends on the perpendicular distance of force from the axis of rotation larger the perpendicular distance less is the force needed to turn the body so the turning effect on the body depends on the product of both the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot point children study hard and keep all your work updated thank you